And then uh, one, one more uh, argument that's brought out, I think a lot, this is one that I've seen a whole bunch of times uh, online, and that's the argument of, of wasted blood, that <clears throat> Jesus dies on the cross for the world. If he really does love the world and he really died for all of them, then obviously some people aren't going to be saved. And so Jesus wasted uh, parts of his atonement. He wasted his blood when he died. Uh, David, can you let us know why that's not a legitimate argument in favor of Calvinism? Well, one of the greatest Calvinists of all time was Richard Baxter. He did uh, verbal battle uh, with John Owen. Owen, of course, was a high Calvinist, Baxter, a moderate Calvinist. So number one here, keep in mind in my answer, um, I'm going to start with the Calvinist. The Calvinist, uh, many Calvinists, those who affirm unlimited atonement historically as well as today, and there are many like that, um, uh, have made some of the strongest arguments against the wasted blood argument. Richard Baxter was one of them. In fact, Baxter talking about this argument made this statement that we should be afraid of blaspheming God by suggesting that Christ died in vain for some people. Whoa. Now understand David Allen didn't say that though. I, I would be willing to say that, but the great Calvinist Richard Baxter, Baxter said, if you're going to make the wasted blood argument, you're on the cusp and you're in jeopardy of blaspheming God. And so I think that's a great place to start in answering the question. Basically, the wasted blood argument is based out of the limited atonement argument, which is the wasted blood argument. It's the concept of Jesus, quote, unquote, dying in vain. It really starts with, with uh, John Owen. He's the one who really promoted it. And virtually everybody who makes the argument today actually is dependent upon Owen's argument of wasted blood. Basically, the idea is, of course, as you said, Sean, if Jesus only dies for the elect, for the sins of the elect, and it's important to say that Jesus only died for the sins of the elect, then if uh, any of the, the, the rest, of, if Christ were to die for the sins of those who are not elect, for the sins of those who would never be saved, then he's wasting his blood. Well, of course, the problem with that is, is several fold. Number one, scripture nowhere teaches that. You don't ever get that argument in scripture. Number two, uh, the, the, it's a, a, it's really a failure. It entails an actual attack on the atonement, on the sufficiency of the atonement. Scripture says that the blood of Jesus is not wasted in any way because the atonement is sufficient for the sins of all people, regardless of whether they believe or not. And so this argument of the wasted blood is a seriously flawed argument. And let me just read you a few words from Richard Baxter on this subject. You got to hear this because this is such gold. Baxter has strong words for anyone who would say that Jesus died in vain or that his blood was wasted on uh, the sins of people who die in unbelief and who are eternally lost. These are the words of Richard Baxter. Those that dare say that Christ is an imperfect redeemer if he does not procure faith itself for every man that he dies for, which is their master argument, they may as well say that God is an imperfect creator because he makes not worms to be men, or that he is an imperfect conservator because he preserved not man from death, damnation, and antecedent calamities, especially from sin, or that God is imperfectly merciful because he permits men to sin and condemns them, or that Jesus is an imperfect redeemer of the elect, because he suffers them after his redemption to sin, to suffer and die, or <laughs> that the Holy Spirit is an imperfect sanctifier, because many wicked men are sanctified and believe imperfectly, so as will not suffice to salvation, and because they resist and quench the Spirit and fall from that faith and sanctification which they had, or that the Spirit is an imperfect comforter, because so many saints live and die in uncomfortable sadness, or that Scripture is an imperfect means, because the effect is so imperfect. In a word, they may as well say that where God does not overcome men's wickedness, he is an imperfect God to them in regard to his mercies, all which beseem not the tongue 
of a Christian, end of quote. <laughs> Wow. wow. <laughs> Baxter, the Calvinist is pretty <laughs> strong on the problem with the wasted blood argument. That no, that was gold. So, uh, and I, I think, so I guess the best way to respond to someone who says the use the wasted blood argument is one, it's not in the Bible. And two, if you're going to use the wasted blood argument, I guess you have to say what 95% of what God does is, is wasted. Like, right. Like, if God lets it rain in the desert, is that wasted? If God lets the sun yeah. shine on the elect and the non-elect, is his love wasted? Oh, you've got a real problem when you're going wow. to try to go down that road. And of course, the, the, the primary flaw in the argument is it assumes limited atonement. Now, that's an assumption first, because there is no scripture that teaches limited atonement. As I begin my chapter in this book on limited atonement, the critique of it, you know, my first sentence is limited atonement is a doctrine in search of a text. Yeah. There is no text in scripture that asserts limited atonement, but there are two dozen that assert unlimited atonement. So the wasted blood argument is flawed because it's based out of or on the false concept of a limited atonement. Well, thank you so much for that.